Welcome to Love Life. I'm Dr. Babe. I'm so excited we've got a fabulous show for you today on the price of perfection. Now, Alicia Keys recently made a bold, no-makeup statement about how beauty lies in the imperfections and how important it is to be our, our natural selves and let that shine through to the public. Campaigns like these really do help to challenge the expectation of perfection that we place on ourselves. But how deep-rooted is this drive for perfection? Many of us have maybe come from families that pushed us to be successful to the point that we pressured ourselves to expect perfection. So what this does is hinder our authenticity by limiting our own self-expression. And this spreads into all facets of life by making it difficult to be self-aware. And when we handicap our ability to be self-aware, we are setting ourselves up for a disillusioned life and ultimately unhappiness, lack of fulfillment. Today, I'll be talking with two women who I believe have experienced and challenged themselves to pass, surpass this expectation of perfection in their own unique ways. So stay tuned. We'll be right back on Love Life. Welcome back to Love Life with Dr. Babe. I'm joined by Cynthia Hugh and Melissa Wolf. Thank you for coming today and joining us on the show. Thanks for the invitation. Yes, Thank you. you're welcome. So price of perfection was the topic that we chose today. And I thought with the two of you, you know, I've had some conversations with each of you about, you know, maybe who you are and what you're doing in your life and all the exciting things that you've been experiencing. Uh, and I thought that maybe you could shine some light on the I guess the experiences of sort of struggling with perfectionism and then also challenging that expectation to be perfect and what that means or, or what's on the other side of that, basically. So, Cynthia, um, I'm wondering if this might be a big question, but bear with me. Um, if you could sort of isolate a time when you felt like you were living in a fishbowl sort of thing. I don't know if that metaphor makes sense to you, but it really it, it has resonance with me. Um, it's kind of like all eyes are on you. People really expect you to be what they want you to be. Um, and that, you, you know, you have to watch like everything you do and present that projection of perfection, perhaps. Um, First of all, is that something that you can relate to, and what was that like? I, I can, and I, it's funny. I think it's brilliant that you brought this particular topic up because I think um, a lot of women go through this. And knowing the family in which I grew up with, you know, I have a very strong Caymanian mother who, where it wasn't unusual for her to come behind me and say, "Oh, but you won't be getting big," and so there was always some form <laughs> of, you know, I know it's a, it's a good thing, um, but there was always some form of not necessarily criticism, but body awareness, yeah. or um, you know, there were tests. And you're, I, I look at, at how I was raised, and it was always about, you know, I want you to be better than me, instead of just saying, I want you to be you. Yes. And so for me, I think throughout my life, there were those times where I thought, am I, am I good enough? Am I doing enough? And it wasn't so much about the outside world. It was actually my most intimate place, which was in my household, that I felt like I had to make sure that I was that overachiever, that perfectionist. And then it became a bit of a routine. And... I think the one time in my life that I can really think that I felt as though there were all eyes on me was when I had my son. Um, you know, I was going through different transi transitions in my life with regards to relationships, friendships, um, and so on. And then you have a child, and there are all these, uh, these what you feel, ways in which you're supposed to raise your child, ways in which you're supposed to portray yourself as a mother. And I have to say, that is one of the titles that I'm very proud of, but it's a title that I have defined. Um, sorry, I touched my mic. Um, and it's taken me some time. You know, I'm not, the, I'm not always that constant cuddler and motivator. I'm the one going, you're driving me crazy. Um, so I think that was, that's really helped me grow into the person that I am. And if, if, I'll share a story. Sure. Uh, when I had my son, I bought one of those Pandora bracelets. You know, and it had his initials, a little baby, and a soccer for my stepson, Josh. And I wore that for six months, and my hair was back, and, you know, I tried to put myself together, but it was a stressful time. At that time, my stepson came to live with us. He was very young, 10 years old, and I had this newborn child, and, you know, living a life where I was, had two jobs, doing TV, um, you know, pretty much doing my own business, and then a husband who's very active. And I thought that that was who defined me. That was it. Mm. Six months later, I took it off, and I've never worn it since because I felt as though I don't, I don't need to title myself. I don't, don't have to just limit to mom, wife, stepmom, business owner. I can just be me, and I'm the perfect me because there's no comparison. That's amazing. I mean, I think that really brings it to light, and the way that you, you, know, you use this concept of 
how you defined yourself and really through the reflections of what other people may have expected you to be and then br being able to break through that mm. for yourself and, and that maybe being a very tangible way that you confronted that. Um, and what do you think was the catalyst for that? I mean, was it the motherhood that, that really drove it home for you? The motherhood and I was unhappy. I was really, really, really unhappy and I, I don't know, it was, I, I think age plays a lot with it as well. You get to a point where the older you get, the less you really care about the small things that perhaps are more important to others. Mm. Um, my friendships also became very, very limited into a small group where I could trust and be vulnerable with them and know that they loved me for who I was, or am rather. And um, my relationship with my husband was huge. Um, I'm not gonna say it's been perfect, we've struggled. And in particular when I had my son, because I was lost. And I think we found a safe place with one another. And he loves me when I'm happy. He loves me when I'm sad. He loves me when I'm angry. He loves me when I'm loud, obnoxious, whatever that is. <laughs> and it gave me the assurance and the, the comfort to feel like, well, if he can do it, I could do it better. Uh, so that was, that was my catalyst, I think. That reminds me of sort of the, the concept of conditional love versus unconditional love and the gift that it is to be able to, to experience unconditional love with a partner, with a parent, with a friend, with yourself, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's part of what we're talking about is that self-acceptance and you know, accepting our imperfections is really about having unconditional love for ourselves and how important that is and freeing that is. Um, I don't know if you can relate to maybe that moment where you realized you, you might have felt unhappy as well, but um, I think that that's so significant because it can creep up on you, mm -hmm. and I think it's important to talk about it because people are afraid to admit that they're unhappy, when, especially when their life is great from the outside. People would look and never guess that you were unhappy, but it's just maybe something nagging at the back of your mind or your heart or your soul. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what it, what, brought up, what it brought up for me when you were talking about that story, and I think that's, you know, it speaks a lot to your own self-awareness that you could you could say, you know what, this isn't good enough for me. I'm, I, I need more. I need to really redefine myself. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think Melissa can relate to this too. It's, it's okay to not be okay. Yeah. Because that's when you figure out, okay, well, pain is now exceeding my fears of, of sitting into this muck. And I'm going to, I'm going to make myself better. Um, so, yeah, I think it comes, like you're saying, from the inside out. Uh, you have to love yourself before anyone loves you. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's really, uh, some of the things that you said really resonated with me because I think it was when I became a mother too that I kind of stepped back and went, oh, wow, <laughs> this is all much bigger and so much more important than, you know, it, for, for me, right. from, a, from, from the deep inside and having so many, like you said, eyes upon you, you know, and I don't know whether it's a female thing or a mother thing or whatever it is, but, you know, sometimes you get sucked into the... Um, the, the vacuum of feeling judged sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. like you're like looking at what you're doing and going, okay, am I doing, am I being the right wife? Am I being the right mother? Am I being the right, am I doing all of these different roles correctly? And we all wear all these multiple hats. Yes. And from, from that, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, do everything perfectly. You can't do everything perfectly because, you know, you have to be really define what perfection is for you. And defining yeah. perfection you know, is, is your, your own personal definition of what it might be and in, in any situation. So much pressure to put oneself under, you know, to feel like you have to do everything right and perfect and all the time be on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it's nice to, to turn off and unplug and just be yourself. I mean, obviously we have to get out there in the world, but, um, you know, I, I really like where we're going with this, but we're going to have to be right back. So stay with us and come back to Love Life.